It's Apple City out here. Super good apple year. That's Bullock's Pippin, Waltana, Pink Parfait, Black Strawberry, Yuma, whatchamacallit, uh, Cherub, new uh, Wixen, X Rubiot. It's a great year for apples. I'm here in my uh, breeding, apple breeding trial rows where I test stuff out. And I want to show you an apple today that is really interesting that I'll probably release this year that's kind of unique. And I just want to catch it before it goes out of season because it's we're kind of at the end of its season right now, or the peak maybe. So I used a parent called Maypole, which is a dwarf columnar. That means that, uh, let's go look at it, I'll show it to you. This is Maypole crab here. It has a small fruit with red flesh that is pretty crabby, but it has this interesting trait of growing as a dwarf like this. So it's called a columnar dwarf. It has side branches, but as you can see, they tend to go out, barely out and then straight up, and there's not a whole lot of them. And the whole footprint of the tree is less than four feet across probably. So that's an interesting trait. And I made a bunch of crosses with this, hoping that that trait would uh, come through, and it has. So I still have yet to do an official count on how many of the offspring of maypole and in which direction, like whether maypole is the seed parent or the pollen parent, throw trees that are this dwarf style. You can see there's three there. This one is not like that. It's not columnar. That one is. That one's not. That one is. The next one's not. They vary, but I think it's at least 50%. You know, it's a lot. It's, it's enough to, you know, pursue. Now, the thing is, uh, almost all of these are just really crabby and you're not very good. Uh, there's been a couple, like this one I, I'm interested in just because of the form. It's got these real stout upright branches and these huge clusters of fruit. I mean, I've picked quite a bit of fruit off this already. Intensive cultivation, you could have rows of these close together, like close together in the row and close together between rows because they're so short. There'd be hardly any pruning. Harvesting would be super easy. Uh, it's kind of intriguing. Now this apple here could be used in a cider blend. It's quite sharp, so it's a good source of acid, which can be useful, and it has this nice red flesh. The flavor is like, I mean, it has some red flesh flavor, but it's not a lot. Uh, but for further breeding, this could be uh, one of interest. You know, most of the rest of these I probably will just end up calling because I'm just not impressed by anything so far. Except for this one. So this is a cross between maypole crab and chestnut and it has a couple of unique traits which made it stand out and I think it's worth getting out to people to test. So, so this apple is showing the columnar trait. Now it's not an ideal columnar really i mean it's it's pretty branchy but it definitely has the trade if you look up and down this stem like most of the buds are between half an inch and an inch apart uh, coming down here also very close so it definitely has the trait and it's going to tend to grow in that direction uh, and of course if you use it in further breeding then you know you could get offspring that have a more classic uh, columnar trait i would i would expect so it has this really fantastic, very strong fruit candy flavor. And if you've watched my apple breeding videos before, you may already know that this is a trait that I'm always interested in kind of chasing down. So one of my other seedlings is hard candy cider. And that one is like a very complex mix of like a bunch of fruit candies mixed together is how I describe it. Of course, it varies, you know, year to year and other, you know, your mileage may vary in terms of your taste buds. But that's kind of how I characterize that one. This one is more of a mono flavor. Um, and if I had to nail it down, I would say it's either watermelon, uh, but maybe with a little bit of grape uh, thrown in. Good news. I juiced some of these and the juice had that flavor. It was very forward and absolutely delicious. Unlike any other apple juice I've ever tasted. And that makes it, you know, basically worth growing period. Like the questions are at this point, will that flavor persist after fermentation? A lot of the aromatics can kind of just disappear and dissipate. Will the flavor persist period? or maybe if there's enough flavor, like there's just a huge amount of flavor that more of it will manage to persist through the fermentation. But either way, as a juice apple, it's again, it's absolutely delicious. Um, maybe that would translate into, 
you know, canned preserved apple juice or jelly. I mean, who knows what the possibilities are. Uh, you can see it's a small sized fruit and a big one would be like this one down here, maybe uh, close to the size of a golf ball. Look at this uh, beautiful waxy bloom with the water droplets on it there. I bit into this the first time, like this is its third fruiting season. And I was like, wow, that is a super strong flavor. And there was only uh, like three apples on it or something like that. So, you know, I got to taste a few, and, but it was really promising. So the next spring, I actually started breeding with this right away. So if you got any crosses from me, like apple seeds that say, let's say uh, suntan X uh, maple X chestnut, then that's this apple. I think uh, it's time for this to go out. I haven't thought of a name yet, but I'll be thinking about it. And if I think of one, uh, by the time this video comes out, I'll put it on the screen or, you know, you're welcome to throw some ideas at me. I would like the name to reflect both the size and growth characteristic, the fact that it's, you know, dwarfish and um, maybe the size of the apple and the fact that it has a lot of fr this like really fruity candy like flavor. You know, OK, here, here's why I'm releasing this apple now. One is it needs to be tested more and I can only do so much of that testing um, and probably won't do a lot of it, especially the cider stuff, like getting this out so people can grow it and ferment it and see what it does. Uh, there's a lot of interest in the columnar trait and people out there who are interested in breeding apples are already breeding apples and are interested in that. I think it has high potential for cider apple production, maybe. Um, and it just and also for small yards it's just a cool it's a really cool trait so out of all the apples that i have grown from columnar seed crosses and that turned out columnar this is by far the one that is the most interesting and worth further breeding because it has a decent texture it's not too crabby and it has this absolutely amazing flavor the other reason is right now it has a legitimate use that i would grow more of it and use it for which is juice i mean this juice is absolutely just delicious i mean this the flavor is very strong it's very much in the juice and uh yeah thumbs up to that now i'm not going to have many scions of this at all i have i did graft at least uh grafted in at least one more spot so there might be a couple scions there but i wouldn't be surprised if i end up with like five scions or something like that and i may save some for grafting more trees if they're available this year which they probably will be if i think of a name uh, they'll be auctioned on figbid.com with my other rare scions like stuff i don't have very much of the stuff that goes on auction is on public auction so if you follow my blog then you'll find out about it i'm very excited to cross this again and i already started again i you know last year i started crossing it with highly flavored apples like hard candy cider that's a no-brainer i mean we have two apples that have these strong kind of like fake candy flavors and they have different lineages right they're from different parents sets of parents completely so that's ideal that's the like ideal case scenario and also for taking something like hard candy cider which is more obviously a cider apple it's tannic and, and has you know other traits you want for cider and just building on this this flavor idea because to me in terms of cider apples, aside from morphology, uh, meaning the, the shape and growth of the tree is kind of interesting. I think the frontier to pursue with cider apples is super highly flavored apples and see if we can get apples that are just over the top flavor that is gonna persist through fermentation and give us some unique uh, traits beyond just, you know, apple-y.